So hello everyone, good afternoon or evening or whatever time of the day you may be watching this, uh, this live broadcast or this recorded broadcast. My name is Alan Jackson with the Foot Candle Film Festival. Here with me, Chris Fry, also with the Foot Candle Film Festival. Chris, Hello, everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Looking forward to talking to these filmmakers. Absolutely. So we are the co-directors and co-founders of the Film Society, and we've had the real pleasure of this entire weekend not only uh, presenting some films for you to enjoy online, but also talking with some of the filmmakers and people involved in the films that you've seen. And this is no exception. This is coming off of the documentary shorts block mm -hmm. that many of you have just watched or um, had watched maybe earlier in the festival and are joining us back for the live Q&A now. And we showed three films during that block of time. And I'm really happy to say that we have two of the three directors with us right now in person uh, via uh, online Zoom to talk with us about their work. So I'm going to show them up on the screen and introduce them for you. Up on the left here, we have Jose Rodriguez. Jose, how are you? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. Great. How are you guys? Great. Jose was the director of the film Remains that we showed as part of our block there. So we'll get back to him in a moment and let him talk a little bit about his film. And on the right, we have Mikel Chitoni. I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> Yes. I was close. I was close. <laughs> so, um, Michelle is joining us from Rome, Italy. So how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. He was the director of the film 5 by 7 that we showed during the short film blog. So two of the three films we have here represented with our two filmmakers. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking with each of them uh, a little bit about their film and then also sharing some questions that both of them can help respond to. And uh, how about we start first with uh, Jose, if you'd like to talk to us a little bit, I'd love to find out with your film, your documentary film, Remains, how did you get connected to the film concept in the first place? I mean, I know you had a connection to it, but maybe let's talk about what came about, why the desire to make this into a, a short documentary film? Right, so if you don't know, I'm, I'm currently active duty in the military. And in the military, we have these, these shifts that we all just have to do, it's just we just watch we watch, uh, we play, we do guard duty. That's what they call it. It's a 24 hour shift. And then it just it randomly, you know, we, everyone gets assigned to it randomly. And one day me and, uh, my co-director Joe during that shift, I was, it was like three in the morning in my time. And he was, in, and he was living in the East coast at that time. I was in Hawaii. So it was a different time zone for him. We were able to chat and I couldn't, couldn't sleep or I wasn't allowed to sleep, but I was telling him about this new job I had and, and I was telling him about like how, how, how I'm, I'm, I'm the photographer that gets sent to document these, these service members searching for the remains from past wars. And I was just, you know, just saying like, yeah, it's a pretty cool job. I get to go to Vietnam and Laos and all these. And then that's when he stopped and he's like, he, cause he is a filmmaker himself. And he's like, dude, that's, that's a movie right there. That's a film. Like I've, I've never seen that. He didn't even know that, that existed. And then that's when it kind of hit, like all my friends and my family members had no idea that that job existed, yeah. you know? So, so I don't know. It just felt like, okay, I could find, maybe there's a way that I could document this, do my job. And then also document it in a more modern way. And when I say that it's a very gorilla, you do everything. You're like, I was the one man band of documenting the whole thing. You know, the interviews, the, the, the filming. That's why there's footage of me, you know, doing like a selfie video type of thing like that. So just let me see if I could just film the whole thing, which was like 35 days of filming in Vietnam. And when we got back home, um, it was over a terabyte of footage to look through. And let's see if we could piece. Oh, it's like a big puzzle. Let's see if we could make a movie out of this. Yeah. So that's how that, that happened. And uh, Jose, am I right in saying that you were the, were you the one finding out that you uh, your wife was pregnant in the film? <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, during yeah during that time, uh, you know, on top of on top of like the the stressful and the hard labor and uh, the hard work that we had to do um, during that time, yep, yeah, uh, my wife couldn't hold it and she just had to tell me. She tried to keep it a secret yeah. as, uh, <laughs> by the time I got back, but you know, I'm glad she told me because we were able to like I feel like in a way artistically put at it into yeah. the film. It, it, it really did work. It was a it was a great touching moment. I really enjoyed that about the film. And, and I think you're right in that the film does a wonderful job of, I mean, I had no idea this job existed either. 
And right. so to, to think that, you know, you could put together, that's part of what documentaries can do is really help educate and expose us to things that we may not be familiar with. So getting a chance to take a, a that 20, 30 minute glimpse into this, this life of this role and this job was, was really uh, uh, exciting. So thank you for, for providing us with that. So. That's great. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Great. We will come back and get some questions and have you talk a little bit about the production of your film a little bit. But I do want to kind of flip over and let's talk to our other guest here. So, uh, M- Michelle, uh, can we ask you a little bit about your film? And we would love to know how you got involved with the uh, the photographer uh, that you made the, the film about. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I've been going around these territories of southern Italy um, for, for several years, but uh, I, I have not any family bond with the, those territories. It's a sort of, I, I fell in love, a romance. <laughs> uh, it started when, in, when I made a documentary on the consequences of the so-called Irpinia earthquake okay. that occurred in uh, 1980. I mean, the consequences uh, are still, mm-hmm. <laughs> still now because you know the Italian society doesn't doesn't like quick changes. So, right. <laughs> so a destruction uh, lasts uh, many years. So I started uh, going there for for that reason, and uh, I went on. And uh, so at, at the cer- at a certain point, the, the the question I had to. Uh, to, to to answer is what am I doing here? <laughs> uh, so and, and and actually that is the question that many people there yeah. asked me. Uh, so I was interested in in, uh, in meeting someone uh, like the, that uh, that photographer who had uh, for professional reasons and with a different method, but the same experience of an external observer of that place. Mm-hmm. So it was for perhaps this was one of the the main reasons I made this uh, for I made this film, yeah. and it was also the occasion to give a contribution to that uh, specific uh, village, Lacedonia, mm-hmm. uh, because I I, I like the place. I, I have many friends there, so I want I wanted to give a contribution to the. Uh, they're, they're looking for a place in the contemporary world. And, mm-hmm. and some of them, yes, a minority, are focusing on culture uh, to, to do that, to find this place. Uh, uh, that is something that's very important because they, they look to the future without denying the roots. Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. is the, the, the deal. And I, want, I wanted to give a contribution to this one. So we, my film, I think, I hope, gave this contribution. I, I think it was an excellent contribution. And Chris and I were talking about it earlier after watching it again. And to think that this, this city, this town now has brought forth a great legacy through the photographs that were brought back and shown. And we were talking about how if we had an opportunity to do that with our own hometown, and see yes. photographs from years back presented to us again that we had not ever seen again. Uh, it would be an amazing experience. So we thank you for for bringing that to that town and uh, and documenting that story. It was it was wonderful. Oh, great. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. So we'd love to t- ask you guys both about just the art of making documentaries. I mean, uh, you know the. Let's talk about some of the challenges that you face in making your own documentary. So each of you probably had some very unique challenges based on the type of film you were making and the person and subjects that you were exploring. Let's start with you, Jose, as far as what did you find to be a real challenge in trying to tell the story you were telling uh, in the film? And other than the fact that I know, obviously, unfortunately, it did not result, your film did not result in actually finding the remains of the individual they were looking for. Uh, tell us about just the challenge of just trying to put this into a, a, a documentary film in general. Yeah, definitely. So the there's there's lots of challenges. I mean, the the first, the biggest obvious challenge, I think, it was the, the physicality. I mean, how physically you, in shape, I guess, you, you should be or have to be to like kind of every day go hiking deal with the the sun deal with the elements 
And then, of course, carrying all the gear, you know, physically, it could get exhausting and you could get mentally like just drained. Um, so not only that, they, and then on top of that, you're always, you know, as a filmmaker, I'm always, and me, since I was also the, the, the filming it myself, I'm always thinking that I, I get that shot. I couldn't be in two places at the same time, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm always hoping and stressing that, that I was able to get what I needed. And that's the first challenge was the, how physical it was and how hot and humid it was. And, you know, so that, that one was the first one. The second one was, yes, you, you, you said it correctly that we, this film, um, I want to educate, you know, I want to show people that this job exists, you know, people are not forgotten and we're always trying to find, you know, especially we're trying to, to search for these service members, but how do I educate and keep the viewer's attention, you know, as far as storytelling goes, because yes, I could have just filmed something, get an interview and that's it. But I wanted to, we, me and uh, myself and uh, Joe, the other film, the other co-director wanted, we really wanted to make it a cinematic and as kind of a different style of documentary than, than what we're used to seeing, right? Because a lot of things are being more cinematic. So that's why in this very basement, there's like these chalkboards that we would just kind of puzzle, you know, instead of using like little sticky notes of which, that wish we had at the beginning, we decided to like make it like actually chalkboard and start like trying to puzzling, okay, this is the scene that should be here. So to answer your question, Physically, it was uh, that was the hardest challenge. But the 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 second challenge was how to keep a viewer's attention, um, like like they're watching a movie, but they're getting educated at the same same time. Yeah. Hopefully, that that makes sense. No, it, it absolutely does. And again, your 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 film kind of automatically led to a building of of suspense and tension because obviously we want to know are they successful in their efforts. But mm -hmm. uh, I think it did a great job of also balancing with some very human elements to get to know the people involved a little bit more, to see them as they're trying to, you know, relax and socialize at, at late hours after working so long during the day. So I think it had a nice balance to it. And uh, I think it, it did great with that. It was wonderful. Um, Michelle, any, any, uh, any challenges you faced when trying to make your film, trying to coordinate the film that you were making? Uh, tell us if there were any challenges or anything you faced along the way. Uh, actually, in general, uh, my work is a very handmade work, okay. uh, and and the solitary one. Yeah. So uh, the, the one of the big challenges is to keep all aspects, uh, technical and at the same time relational aspects, under control. And um, this is this is the, really a challenge for me, and also. The mediation, find the mediation between the the search for for a result I expected and being open to the novelties, being open to the fact that reality sometimes suggests to change the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, in addition to that, uh, there were there was the the the, the, the language problem. <laughs> this film I had I had to film using English, and I said in the premise, my English is bad. <laughs> So, yeah. so it was not so easy to to manage the relationship with Frank, but he's a, but he's a lovely person. So uh, uh, he that, that this was a, a big aid for me. The, yeah. His personality was really uh, comfortable. So okay. okay. Well, I was going I was I was going to ask you if um, if Frank was very open to you following him and documenting his his story as he traveled yeah. back to Italy, if he was comfortable with that or did that take some work to get him comfortable with it? No, no, everything went okay from this point of view. Also, I think because he knows, which is the, the, the big difficulty, the challenge in, in doing this work, uh, he made it with uh, the with camera, I made it with the, with the camcorder, but it's a, almost the same. So I think it was, uh, he was prepared. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, I know we're going to go over to some comments from the audience here in just a moment, but I personally want to just kind of comment on one scene from each of your films that I think really made, uh, was really, I thought, well, extremely well done among many others. But um, Mitchell, I was going to say with your film, uh, I love the choice you made on how you ended the film. Um, it was the last interview you had in the film with Frank, 
and you asked Frank a very kind of big question, and it was one he could not answer, but I love the cutaway to right before we could hear him give his answer, because I think it's best left a little uh, open for that. So. Yes, I, I didn't want that. Yes, I didn't want the horizon of the film was closed. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to open. Uh, <laughs> the and I think it did a great job of just dropping us right into the middle of the story and not having to do a lot of set up, you know, to get there. So I, I, I liked really the way you laid that story out. Uh, and then I was also going to say, Jose, I, I've already mentioned yours, but I'm going to mention it again. I think your decision to drop yourself into the film uh, a little bit more and especially showing, you know, something momentous that was happening during your life that was in the midst of all this was also really exciting to see, of course, with the announcement of uh, the pregnancy going on there. So was that a decision when that happened? Did you feel like that was something you just wanted to go ahead and, and you knew was going to be in the film? Or is that something you decided when you when you came home and started putting it together? No, um, the tr no, we decided that late because the rough cut, you know, <laughs> the rough cut that we have is like 55 minutes long and it's without me. Like the whole movie is just without me at all. It's just about the team, longer interviews, more interviews of the team members. And the pregnancy wasn't there. I didn't even know that my wife actually, she's the one I recorded that. She called me through Facebook on her laptop and she recorded that with her phone. I didn't even know she did that um, until I got back, you know? So once we saw a rough cut and how like kind of it, it, it wasn't, <laughs> well, it wasn't right. You know, like, you know, that you have that feeling that it's just, it's, it's, it sucks. You know, you look at it and you're like, no, this is not what we want. So we just went back to the drawing board and Joe, He's like, we need, we need your character. Like he kept saying, we need your character. And, and I'm like, I, I do, I do have a lot of like those selfie videos, but those were meant to be just kind of for me in a sense, just like me to keep it in a, like a little video journal. But then we started like kind of adding a couple of those in and wow, that was like the key, I guess. I'm not trying to like say that I was like the, the star <laughs> or anything like that, but, but it did, it did when we did a little review, like a little movie thing that they get to write their comments. I was surprised of how many people loved how how they include that I included the filmmaker was included in the film, yeah. you know. So that was kind of like surprising. So, so yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. I know we have some comments from the audience for each of you. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna uh, let Chris read out one of the comments and let you respond to it or questions that may be there. Okay. Um, the music with five by seven. Somebody's commenting. They just thought it was really excellent. It was perfectly mixed with the entire film. Um, who and how did you choose the music? And they're just they're just curious about how you how you work that in. Yes, I chose the music, and the music is for, by two uh, local authors. Um, one not not exactly local, one from Naples, uh, the most more electronic one, and the jazz one is from is by. An author born in Lacedonia, the, the, just the, the the village where I shot the film, okay. and um, in particular, one of the tracks uh, was written thinking about uh, a, a big hall where people uh, gathered uh, to to dance uh, in the in the sixties and seventies. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, That's great. No, it was really, really great musical choices there. So it really made the film flow very nicely. So, hey, Chris, what else do we have? Okay, um, the, somebody was commenting, the open opening of Remains grabbed you instantly and set the tone in the first few seconds. They were curious about the locals who helped. Were they volunteers and were they comfortable being filmed, I guess, at the outset? It looked like they were towards the end, but what are your comments on that? Jose, your comments on that for the opening of the film there. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, definitely. The So the opening of the film is something that it was, again, right, I wanted to keep the viewer's attention. So I kind of just wanted to show one of the biggest, the biggest challenge for everyone, not just myself, like I mentioned earlier, was the amount of physical work that we did. So I wanted to like kind of show that it was like eight hours of just digging and we literally moved a mountain, you know, so, so trying to find, you know, trying to find the service member, um, sorry, first class pageant, so, so I wanted to show that and then hopefully create some curiosity. And that was, that was like, kind of like my goal towards that. 
Um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? Uh, the uh, the people that helped you, the locals, oh, they were right. wondering volunteers or like how do they feel about being filmed? So so those are it's it's their hired help, like they're locals that are willing to like help us out. Um, but you know, they're hired help. So the, the United States government that they're the ones that we, we pay them and then they'll they'll help us. And the truth is is that like we can't really do it without them. They know the land better than we do. And then they're they're really crafty. They could <laughs> they could also construct certain things that could help us. So, um, I, like you saw, it's only like 12 Americans, you know, and then they, ha- and then we had 80 local help, um, local hired help that were willing to help us. So it's more of the, it's, a, it's like above my pay grade, how that works, how like they, they talk to like the, the local government and then they see if they could help us out. We ask for help and then they can see what they can do. They find these, 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 um, local people in the area that are able, able to help us for, for an amount of, you know, income of some sort. And, and then again, um, we're digging, it's, it's 30 to 45 days. So yeah, we get to meet each other, even though there's a language barrier, we see each other's faces every day. And then, you know, they get to know our personalities in a way, like they kept calling me, um, you know, for my name. And then obviously I'm the cameraman. They always see the camera with me and they were never shy or scared about the camera. If anything, they were really curious about it. Always wanting to see it wanting to see what's up. They'll, they'll do a little peace sign sometimes, you know, so, so I had no trouble film. They have no trouble with my camera. I had no trouble filming them as well. Cool. That's great. Um, so both, both films kind of share something uh, interesting and unique in that, uh, both of you appear in your own films and both of you are running camera for a good part of your own films as well. So, uh, Mitchell, I know that I see you, I saw you in one shot, I think when you were in the car, and you were uh, videotaping uh, Frank as he was riding in the car and you were in the back seat and you had another camera uh, mounted up at the front that was also capturing um, Frank from the front. So uh, you were you were doing your own videotaping in many of these cases. Is that correct? Yes, yes. I, 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 I like to try. I don't think uh, the auto must be outside the... Yeah. of the film. I, I think it, it's good to show the game, yeah. so without any problem about that. Good. Uh, it's, it's also um, okay, a, a, a moment of truth about mm-hmm. the filming, about uh, um, telling stories. Yeah. So the story is a construction, it's also a technical construction. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, show, you show the game. Yes. <laughs> um, construction. The scene where the 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 town is having a presentation um, and making speeches about Frank and about the photograph and the exhibition. Was that the opening of the exhibition? And was that yes, the, it was the, the, the opening of the museum, the foundation of the museum. Okay. And was that opening? Uh, did you have that planned for for the 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 film, or was it already planned and you just had no, an no, opportunity to film it? It was not planned for the film. Okay. It was that day? <laughs> okay. Good. So it was really you getting out there and just capturing that, and you did a great yes. job of of capturing the the uh, the emotion of that event as well. So Thank you. that was great, Thank you. wonderful. Chris, do we have another comment or question? Yes, um, Jose, this is for you. For um, they were wondering where does the funding for the actual program come from, and then separately they were wondering um, where is the funding that you and your partner are getting to produce this film. So they were just wondering about funding. I see. Finance and uh, fin- financially. So, like I mentioned in the beginning, um, I'm active duty in the army. So, so this for me is just a um, what do we call a duty station. I was stationed in Hawaii in an agency that's called DPAA, which stands for Defense um, Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, anyway, so they're they're the ones that since they're an agency and they're they're job is just to find the account the non-countable right so they they're the ones that are looking for service members from the vietnam korean and world war ii gotcha. and so that's how they get their that's how they get their funding the way they do it i'm not uh, i'm not the the person to ask about how they get their funding right because i got sent there to be the photographer Sure. And I'm and I'm sent there and I'm and I'm pretty much I'm, my job is to document 
the process and the things they find and everything. So it could, you know, go in history books, you know, this is what we found and this is who we found. Sure. And as far as like me and then how my, me and um, the co-filmmaker that I was working with and co-director, we were able to reach out to like, kind of do like a GoFundMe style type of thing okay. by explaining, um, explaining what our goal is and our budget. We really, all we needed was just, the budget to we just needed a budget to to interview the family members that lived in North Carolina, you know. So I just needed someone to fly me from from Hawaii to North Carolina, you know. So we didn't ask for a big budget. We just asked enough budget just just to um, to travel, and you know, with the support of of the military that that we have, they I, I, we were able to get the budget, and then the rest of the film was done in this laptop behind me. Um, <laughs> And this laptop behind me in this very room. So, oh, wow. so not a, not a, I'm sorry if that's like not the no, no. answer people are looking for, but it's just, it's just, it's more of those right time at the right place type of thing. Sure. Absolutely. That works. Um, I'd love to hear each of you talk a little bit about um, other projects that either maybe you're looking to be working on or other types of uh, film related projects that you may uh, be currently working on or looking to be starting in the future or just any aspirations you've got for other work going forward because I just wanted to kind of hear a little bit about your thoughts on what you're doing in terms of filmmaking right now so while I've got you on the screen there Jose you want, you want to tell us a little bit about any anything upcoming or is it really just going to be kind of more documentation in the line of some of the work that you're already doing I mean I mean I do have um, a couple projects aligned you know some are passion projects some are like kind of um, projects that that are related to this film so to the ones that are related to this film is is the service members that are missing from past wars some of them are also missing in uh in the sea in the ocean so i'm hoping that a sequel could be done in the ocean you know now we have the complications of the mountains and in the jungles now let's now let's make a film about the complications of the, you know, the great blue, the great deep blue, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so see, um, that's, that's, that's on the works, hopefully. Um, that's the next thing that me and uh, Joe, we want to really work on. And then um, me personally, I'm, I'm also, it's funny that we're talking about, I'm a, I'm a passion photographer. I love photography, mm -hmm. you know, the, so I'm just working on um, a, like on a photo book, um, 50 states, 50 images type of thing, you know, so that's like kind of all this board stuff that I got going on here. So, so that's your work in the background behind you. Yeah, yeah, the, those are the pictures behind me as well. So so I try to, you know, I'm a, as much as I love filmmaking, I also love photography and I have to try to like kind of continue to try to balance those two things. Sure. So, so as far as film goes, yes, I'm going to try to continue on a sequel of Remains. Um, and, I, and then I will also try to continue doing documentary style um, photography, I mean, videography and then photography just on the on the side, I guess. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's great. Uh, Michelle, how, how about you? Tell us a little bit about yeah. some of your other work and some other work maybe you're looking to, to, to do next. Um, I have been working since a couple of years about uh, a story in another village near those near Lacedonia. Uh, involving the issue of the cultural heritage, oh, okay. in this case, the, the physical cultural heritage, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, buildings that they want to, to, to crush down and mm -hmm. some people doesn't want to. And uh, the team is, is uh, quite the same in, uh, some, in, uh, from a, point, you know, a certain point of view, because it's always about resisting mm -hmm. in those difficult places which are at risk of uh, disappearance because of uh, a huge crisis of the population. There isn't any work, uh, the young people go to the, to the big cities and so on. And, but there are some uh, minorities who fight against <laughs> this, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, disappearance of, from, the, from the maps. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they do it uh, uh, focusing on on the the identity on culture, okay. and um, this uh, I, I think th this is very interesting because I think I, I find something uh, some fire in the in, in those people some something 
uh, a, a, a local author uh, calls it the la radice infiammata della residenza, the, 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 the firing root of residency, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Great. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and this is really interesting for me because I think this is something it's quite uh, I have a void there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have a, uh, and they have, and then they're in, 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 in and their territories are uh, uh, often considered as, as voids, mm -hmm. but I think it's the contrary, oh. because of this reason. Right. Because the, this is, the, there is this, uh, this continuing uh, tension, this research mm -hmm. uh, of uh, 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 a reason to stay. Yeah. And uh, this is a very interesting issue. <laughs> well. I, uh, I, I've looked over your filmography. You've, you've produced a lot of films and a lot of documentaries. And uh, yeah, I know uh, it sounds like you take, take on some very interesting projects and subjects. So we, we appreciate that. And I just want to say to both of you, we're, we're, we're running out of our time before our next film starts. And I just want to bring both of you back up on the screen and just say thank you very much for not only uh, producing the film that you did. Our audiences have had a wonderful time watching both of them. Absolutely. We've already gotten some wonderful feedback from a lot of our audience about having seen the films. And, uh, you know, we did have over 350 submissions to this year's festival. So getting it down to the 30 that we were showing this weekend was a tough process. But thank you for telling the stories that you're telling and, and the education that's involved. We learned a lot about some uh, a, 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 a town, a culture, a form of art with the photography, and we learned about a whole role of, uh, of work going on in the world that we, we didn't realize mm -hmm. and you know, getting a lot of admiration for both of those online. So just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. We're very happy to have both of you here. So, all right. Thank and, you so uh, much. I'm just going to say back to... Uh, good. I'm just going to say this back... This is a really great festival. I... I <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I must say, this is really, I really appreciate your work. Well, I tell you, whenever the world changes back to normal uh, and we have festivals in person, please know both of you are more than welcome to come join us in North Carolina next time. Yeah. And uh, you have an open invitation to come uh, either yeah. share your future work or just come and spend time with us. We'd love to see you in person. So I would awesome. love to. Okay, awesome. <laughs> wonderful. That's great. Uh, to the audience out there watching, uh, thank you for sticking around for this conversation after the films. Hope you found it uh, helpful and enjoyable. Uh, there are still several films going on throughout the rest of the weekend, but of course you can also go back and watch any of the other films as well. And we have recorded question and answer sessions after each one of those films that we've already completed. Please remember to go and rate these films that you saw, all three films in this block. You need, If you're not sure where to do that, for every film you've seen, you need to go back to the page where you initially bought or purchased or unlocked that film. And there will be a bar running along the bottom where you can rate each of the films. We would like for you to give a rating to every film you see because that helps determine our audience favorite awards that we will be giving out on Sunday evening, tomorrow evening, uh, as part of the festival. And uh, it's all driven by audience rating. So please, everybody who sees the film has a chance to rate each film. And that goes for the short films too all the ones in the list that you would have seen. Thank you so much.